We may not know it, but there's still others out there. Oh wait, there's more? Mm-hmm. Hi, I'm Walter, and this is Urban Wild City. On one of the previous episodes, we tried to identify some of the very common birds seen around Cagayan de Oro City. We learned that there are more of them than just the Mayas coexisting with us. So aside from the tree sparrows and the chestnut munias, there's the yellow vented bulbuls, the olive-backed sunbirds, the starlings, and others. This time around, we try to quote-unquote discover some of the other city birds the avian experts say are common and yet unfamiliar to most of us. Some of them you might have recognized already but they are not your regular urban birds that can be easily seen on an ordinary day. Let's check them out. First on the list is the black crowned night heron. It has a black head and back with the remainder of the body white or gray. Its eyes are red and has short yellow legs. Immature birds have dull gray-brown plumage with numerous white spots. As the name suggests, it is most active at night or at dusk. It may also come out at dawn or early morning. Here, filmed just at the back of my house, the heron is gingerly wading through the water looking for a meal, probably a fish or a frog. Another bird of the same family with the herons is the bittern. I think this is a male cinnamon bittern with its recognizable overall cinnamon-ish feather color. This could be a female cinnamon bittern, otherwise it might be a female von Schrenex bittern. <laughs> I hope I said it correctly. Females of both species have almost identical features. One of the more common species of dove is the spotted dove. A half collar on the back and sides of the neck made of black feathers with white spots on it is visible. If I'm not mistaken, the next bird is a clamorous reed warbler. Living up to its name, this one is a very noisy bird. Most of the times, you can only hear the loud calls as the bird is concealed somewhere in the vegetation. It loves to stay hidden, though it may come out sometimes to eat. Here, probably a juvenile, identified by its molting feathers, is singing its heart out in the open. Next is the coppersmith barbet. This little avian is like a cute stuffed toy wrapped with miniature Jamaican and German flags. Striking features are the red forehead, yellow and black face, and a red and yellow throat. Body is mostly green. Both sexes look alike while juveniles are duller and lack the red patches. The bird is best known for its metronomic call. Here are two barbets having a rhythmic, monotonous vocal show. Another green bird which occasionally visits my neighborhood is the guayabero. It belongs to the family of parrots. It may eat a wide variety of fruits but the bird's name is derived from its reputation for eating guavas, though I have yet to sit stop by at my guava tree. That would be lovely. It is endemic to the Philippines which means you cannot find this bird in other countries. Hmm, not to me. Another species of swallow swooping the skies of Cagayan de Oro are the Pacific swallows which belong to the same family with the barn swallows which I featured on one of my episodes. Yeah, the birds at Marcus Bridge? <laughs> they almost look the same, the Pacifics and the barns. One of the physical differences between the two species is the Pacific's shorter tail. Here, they are basking and enjoying the sun at Cagayan de Oro Gardens. Speaking of Cagayan de Oro Gardens, actually there's a lot of birds there which you cannot regularly see at the downtown city proper. One of which is the Paddyfield Pipit. This resident bird is quite a runner, moves quick and fast. They love to forage on an open field with small insects as their main diet. A little bit chumpy, always on the lookout for predators or paparazzis like me. <laughs> Another cute bird the size of a tree sparrow, also seen at Cagayan de Oro Gardens, is the Pied Bush Chat. 
It is commonly found in an open field picking up insects from the ground for a meal, just like the paddy field pipettes. Males are black with a white vent and a white wing patch. Females are mostly brown without the white markings, while juveniles have small white spots on parts of the body. Some birds become sexually mature before acquiring adult plumage. Here's an example of such behavior when I was granted an audience to a playful mating ritual of these young birds. Here, you can see that the female is playing a little hard to get. <laughs> Such a tease. She then approaches the male aggressively, maybe trying to steal a kiss. And then a glorious moment. Birds dancing in front of my camera. What a rare sight. Gotta learn those moves, eh? Adding to the list of the new birds I saw at Cagayandeo or Gardens are the white-breasted wood swallows. Well, they are inappropriately named as wood swallows as they are not closely related to the true swallows such as the barn and the pacific swallows. They have dark gray head and neck and upper parts while the underparts and underwings are white. Next is another small bird called the red-killed flower pecker. The upper parts are black while the lower parts are white with a striking red mark on the abdomen, giving the bird its name. Despite of its tiny size, this bird produces a loud rhythmic sound. It is an endemic bird found only in the Philippines, Atog Yaponi. I've seen this bird a few times only at my backyard. It's a white-browed crake, a relative of the resident barred rail. Noticeable features are the black and white facial patterns. It easily gets spooked. Next is a bird not hard to spot if it is around where you are because of its conspicuous bluish color and the disproportional size of its head and bill. I was very ecstatic when I saw this the first time. It's a white-colored kingfisher. It is named as such because of the white band around its neck. It is called Tikarol in Bisaya. It is a perch and weight hunter just waiting for its prey. When it spots something, a fish, an insect, or any small critters, it glides to catch it. However, this kingfisher at my backyard might try his luck on the next dive. And rounding up the list is a bird I recently filmed at my backyard and the newest one I saw, his fluffiness, the black nape monarch. If the white-colored kingfisher bedazzled me, this bird captivated me. <laughs> Just look how adorable it is. Black nape monarchs are sexually dimorphic where two sexes of the same species exhibit different characteristics including appearance. Here's an illustrated definition of dimorphism. There's probably more to this list. Nature never fails to surprise us with awe and wonderment. Who knows what birds or animals could show up the next time around? As Cagandero is becoming more developed year after year, the resident birds refuse to leave and the visiting ones just can't miss to stop by. After all, they have been adapting to the ever-changing environment since who knows when. The city is a shared community. I think we humans are more capable of doing what's best for everybody, people and animals alike. Let us take care of our environment and the animals. Let us think and do more. The importance and beauty of animals are intended part of God's wonderful creation. Thank you for watching. See you in my next story. This is Urban Wild City.